Do you think that lactate levels are a contributing factor to the improvements in cardiovascular uh, disease risk and things like that? So the lactate question is an interesting one because I, it's, it, you know, I, I, I sometimes measure my lactate after a intense workout and it's funny because most of the time, you know, when people are trying to stay in that zone two level, they're trying to keep their lactate low and I'm the opposite. I'm trying to raise it as high as I can. Right. So lactate is a lot of times thought about this metabolic waste molecule when we're, when we're forcing our muscles to work really hard, our body is using glucose in a, um, without the mitochondria and it's, it's, it's metabolizing glucose and then lactate's made as a byproduct. And it's like, Oh, this is what waste product. Uh, actually it's not a waste product. It's actually getting reused by muscle, by mitochondria for energy because it's easily used as energy by mitochondria, but it's also getting released into circulation and in circulation, it's getting transported to tissues like the heart and it's used again as energy in the heart. Um, it's transported to the brain and this is my biggest interest because uh, of the effects on the brain. Lactate's being consumed at high quantities by the brain. This has been shown in a variety of animal studies, in human studies, radio labeling, labeling um, that lactate does get consumed uh, during, you know, during exercise and the, by the brain. And it's it's essentially not only an energetically favorable type of um, uh, fuel. So what I mean by that is like your, your neurons like to use it because it takes less energy to use that than it does glucose, but it's also a signaling molecule. It's a way for your muscles to communicate with your brain. Hey, I have a lot of stress being put on. We got to respond to this stress. It's a stressful situation, right? Um, and so it's a direct form of your, your muscles to communicate with your brain because you got to be mentally like on top of your game. If you're like working out really hard, like your, your, your body has these systems in play, right? And so it increases things like norepinephrine. Um, that's been shown as well. So lactate increases norepinephrine and this actually fuels your brain activity during intense exercise. Um, and it's funny because fMRI studies have shown this and, um, you know, you, you, you really like the, the norepinephrine ha having the focus and the tension, you, you really like, it's part of that, like, I think program of like, you, you know, your brain also is working harder when you're exercising hard, just like your muscles and your heart. And it's important. You need your brain to work hard too. Right. And that lactate is what's essential for that. The lactate's doing it. Um, the other thing lactate's doing is it's increasing, it's signaling to increase what's called brain drive neurotrophic factor, BDNF. And that is happening in your vascular system. It's also increasing at the blood brain barrier and it's increasing in the brain. And what it does in the brain is it's very important for the growth um, of new neurons. So this happens in certain regions of the brain, like the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory. Um, in fact, there's a study from, I think it was like Dean Ornish's group many years ago that showed like a couple of months of aerobic exercise increased the brain volume of, in, the hip, of the, in the hippocampus region by X amount in like older individuals. And it was like, oh, wow, you can actually increase your brain volume after exercise, right? So BDNF plays a role in that. It also plays a role in learning, strengthening connections between neurons and memory. It plays a role in um, neuroplasticity. So this is the ability of your brain to change and adapt to a changing environment. So this is very important for um, not only just cognition, but also just, you know, uh, plays a role in depression as well. So people that are depressed have decreased neuroplasticity. So in other words, they have a problem. Their brains aren't able to adapt to changing environments as well. And that's part of what sort of instigates the depressive feelings when you can't adapt to your environment. It's like, what do I do? I can't like, you know, I don't know what to do. It's like, so, so it plays a role in depression as well. So um, increasing brain derived neurotrophic factor improves cognition, staves off brain aging, you know, plays an important role staving off neurodegenerative disease. In fact, there've been studies in animals done, exercise induced BDNF. If you give an animal a drug that blocks that, they don't experience any of the, the cognition benefits <laughs> from exercise. Short-term and long-term? Um, I don't know how long-term the studies went out. I mean, that's yeah. a good question. I don't, because then it's like you get, well, what about taking that drug long-term? What's mm -hmm. that doing? Yeah. Um, but certainly short-term. So like the cognition boost and stuff that happened immediately. Also neurogenesis and stuff isn't increasing as well. But the, 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 the battery of cognitive tests they subject these animals to, they didn't have the improvements that they did when they had the exercise without the BDNF blocking drug. 
Interesting. So, do you, so yeah. Do you, do you think that like some of the mental benefits that we have chalked up to being endorphins is actually just an acute response to lactate? I do. Yeah, I do. I think that, um, I think there's a, a lot of things that are changing with exercise. I mean, you know, Mike Snyder's group showed something like 500 molecules in the blood are like changing <laughs> 500. Um, so there's a lot of changes that are occurring. Lactate, I think is one of the, it is very acute. Um, so you're, you know, you can, you can go from at, at baseline steady state levels. Most people have about one millimolar of lactate. When you get to your, when you start to do your high intensity training, depending on how intense we're talking about, let's say you go anywhere between seven to 20 millimolar, um, that'll go down pretty quick after about 20 minutes, you're back to one millimolar. And that largely is because other organs are consuming it fast. So in the brain, the brain being one of the biggest ones that actually consumes the lactate, again, it's fueling brain activity. So when your brain is like working harder, lactate's fueling it. So right now our brains are working hard. We're having a very intellectual discussion. Um, so the question is like, if we had just made a bunch of lactate from exercise, would that be, you know, fueling and helping? I think so. I think so. Because, you know, the lactate is increasing norepinephrine. It's increasing serotonin. It's increasing, increasing brain-driven neurotrophic factor. But it's also just helping our brain, um, you know, use energy more efficiently. So lactate gets transported across the blood-brain barrier through the same transporter. It's called MCT as beta-hydroxybutyrate, that ketone body that everyone talks about, which you know a lot about from being in ketosis. Um, it gets into the brain and neurons use it for energy, much like they do beta hydroxybutyrate. So it's converted into pyruvate and easily used as energy, very easy, much easier than actually having to convert glucose into energy. And, and so, um, and in fact, most, most people don't realize this, but a lot of neurons mostly are using lactate as energy because astrocytes, our brain supporting cells make lactate and mm. they suck it up from the astrocytes and the astrocytes, I mean, and then the, the neurons and use lactate as energy. So, um, making extra lactate in, a, in addition to what we talked about, increasing brain derived neurotrophic factor, increasing, um, increasing neurotransmitters. It also increases mitochondrial biogenesis. So this has been shown in animal studies, lactate itself increases a protein called PGC1 alpha, which is one of the main regulars of regulators of mitochondrial biogenesis. Animal studies have found that exercise induced lactate gets into the brain that increases PG1, PGC1 alpha and mitochondrial biogenesis specifically in neurons. I haven't seen any human studies. I don't know that we ever will. I mean, to, you know, to do that would be require um, tools that we don't have yet, but there's no reason why that mechanism wouldn't be conserved in humans. I think it is increasing mitochondrial biogenesis probably also in, in neurons as well, lactate mm -hmm. in humans, yet to be empirically shown um, in humans. But um, so I also, that's another important aspect because mitochondrial health is hugely important for, um, you know, cognition, for staving off brain aging, you know, in the, we're talking specifically yeah. in the brain. And then lactate is also allowing glucose to be spared from neurons. In other words, neurons then don't have to consume glucose. They don't have to use energy to, you have to use a lot of energy to be able to use glucose as an energy source. So they're not having to work as hard and that glucose is now allowed to be used for other things. And what, what's kind of, there's, there's a term in the literature called glucose sparing, the glucose sparing effect. And specifically in neurons, um, what happens is glucose can then be used in other biochemical pathways. And the, one of the main ones is the pentose phosphate pathway to make precursors for glutathione, NADPH being the main one. And so, um, and this has been shown that lactate can allow glucose sparing and this allows then increases in glutathione synthesis because uh, you're then allowing glucose to not be used as energy. It can be used to make this other important antioxidant. It's the major antioxidant in the brain. My personal take is that the repeated doses of lactate that you're getting from high intensity exercise probably have cumulative effects with respect to glutathione synthesis, with respect to obviously there's the brain derived neurotrophic factor effect, all that stuff, right? Um, but also just, you know, going, going to the, the traumatic brain injury model, which I think is a very interesting way to look at brain aging in real time, because 
Brain aging is this sort of insidious damage that happens over time. It accumulates and, you know, you have inflammation, reactive oxygen species, dysfunctional mitochondria, autophagy going down, protein aggregates. You get the point, right? Like this stuff is accumulating yeah. over decades, right? And it's part of the aging process. Traumatic brain injury is like, it's like almost like Alzheimer's disease, like in real time. Yeah, it's accelerated. It's, it's like, like, yeah. In fact, yeah. TBI is increase the risk of Alzheimer's disease, depending on how many times TBIs have occurred, anywhere from twofold to like 15 fold. Oh. Like they have the same effect of having the well-known genetic um, APOE4 allele or having, it's almost like having two of them. So traumatic brain injury, um, a lot of you know damage is happening. It's almost like the whole aging process, but like instead of over 30 years, it's like 24 hours, right? So um, there's been studies with um, looking at traumatic brain injury and lactate. So George Brooks, the, the father of the lactate shuttle, the one who was uh, originally responsible for showing lactate gets shuttled from muscle into the brain, into the heart, and it's beneficial in acting as a signaling molecule. Um, he's been done a lot of work with, you know, collaborating with like UCLA and traumatic brain um, injury patients. So people that are coming with like a gunshot wound to the head, for example, are coming into like the, the ER. Infusing patients with sodium lactate improves their uh, their TBI scores and their outcomes. Like they do better. Um, and so, like, why is that? Well, it's probably a lot of reasons, but glucose sparing could be one. You know, the BDNF, mitochondrial bio biogenesis, speculation on that. All all these are sort of the mechanisms are sort of speculation, but there's a lot of possibilities and, and possible explain pl biologically plausible reasons why sodium lactate is, is improving TBI outcomes compared to just saline, right? So um, I personally think the more vigorous the intensity of the exercise, you're getting that lactate and it's, it's having such beneficial effects in the brain that it's really important for staving off brain aging. I have a high risk for um, neurodegenerative diseases that are in my family. And so I'm very focused on the brain. And I, when I'm doing exercise, it's, it's very much like, I don't want to get Parkinson's. I don't want to get Alzheimer's disease. And, and this is where, you know, I think exercise intensity shines and why I'm so focused on trying to get um, my heart rate up to make, to make my lactate higher. I don't always measure lactate after every workout. I have measured it quite a few times, but um, that, you know, trying to get my lactate higher, like it's important to me because I think that it's just so beneficial. And I think that there's cumulative effects of it as well.